Good evening and welcome to the uh, Brookfield Selectman's meeting of Tuesday, May 21st, 2019. Would you like to rise and join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to entertain a motion. Yeah, I'd like going. to entertain a motion to approve an expense warrant for 521.19 for $45,714.39 and to approve a school warrant for 521.19 for $72,757.40 and approve a payroll warrant for 522.19 for $163,514.05. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then um, we have, I would like a motion also um, to approve the bylaw committee minutes of 130 19 and 514 19. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So I'm going to. 6.33, we have to wait two more minutes. Well, I can take a, a minute if we, sure. we would like. Okay. So Barbara Clancy and I attended a CMRPC elderly housing um, grant request or grant uh, discussion, and uh, the town of Brookfield and Brookfields have, were awarded a $10,000 study grant for direct technical assistance oh. to look at elderly housing in the region. $10,000 grant. <clears throat> and if we have a, bit, a minute more, I'll hit another one. So I uh, received an email from Angobi's office today that the uh, representatives of uh, ecological restoration will be visiting the town of Brookfield to look at Rice Corner Road and the runoff issues at Rice Corner Road. And Cindy has been contacted by uh, the Stra Strap Grant folks, and they're suggesting that we drop Molasses Hill off the Strap Grant that we had put in the last time that we didn't get, and focus on yeah. Rice Quarter and Gay yeah. Road for runoff. Yes. I think that we should. And so that that's how that hopefully wants to go down, so that we can take care of both. And Ecological Restoration has the opportunity to do two write grants should. Uh, that work out. And now that should be 635, and it is. And it is. Outstanding. All right. I'd like to open a hearing for Oak Home Brewing Company's application for a Farmer Series Pouring Permit and Entertainment License. And I don't know if anybody is here from Oak Home. Did they you are. Know? Oh. Yes. If you'd like to come up and join us and maybe explain a little bit about what you're doing. Yeah. Well, I, I, so it's a motion it's to It's a motion to accept, accept the application. application. And once we accept the application, then um, we have to send it into the ABCC to get approval. Right. And are we going to cover the entertainment as a part of this or is this yes, a separate we're going, motion? Yes, we're going to do that together. All we'll right, do both so we'll do, do both of them together. So do we want them to come up at all and discuss it? I'd like to know how they're doing. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> come on up. Yeah. yeah. We hear lots of exciting things, yes. so this is a great opportunity to hear more. Uh, last last year we opened uh, in, right after the. Uh, would you, excuse me. Would you like to introduce oh, yourself so we know who you are? Uh, Pradella. I'm uh, I'm not a I'm not a resident of the farm actually. Uh, I'm Chris Perdon. Yes. Yeah. He's the owner of the farm. farm. I'm Andrew saying. Woodward. Andrew is going to be the uh, brewer for mm -hmm. the brewery and one of the co-owners. Uh, Chris is a, uh, another co-owner and I'm a third co-owner. So there's okay. three of us that are actually owning and managing the brewery. Okay. Uh, so just to speak about the farm a little bit because I'm so proud about how it's going. It's, uh, We've had um, five weddings so far, and um, we've already had to uh, expand the parking lot a little bit just to make sure that we've got enough 
uh, coverage for all the cars that are there, mm -hmm. but uh, so far uh, we've had very good reviews from all of the weddings that have been there. And Christmas trees went very well. Good. Yeah, we went from 75 trees last year when the Jepsons owned it to mm -hmm. about 380 this year. More uh, great. Wow. So, That's good. Um, we planted 3,000 more. Wow. It's a seven to ten year process. No. Though, so yeah. We're right. going to have to buy in, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, we plan to do pumpkins in the future. Uh, raspberries are currently there. We planted another 300 blueberry bushes to, to kind of get that process going a little bit better. Um, so, Great. We're going, yeah. Good. Animals. Animals. Um, my wife has horses there. She's got three horses. Um, yeah, chickens right now, and pigs on the way. I'm going to do a couple of cows as well this year. That's just great. To start small. That's great. That's nice to hear that that the property is being used, uh, you know, like that again. And I'm so happy that somebody bought it. Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. So did Kenny hook you into the tractor parade? Yes, he did. All right. <laughs> oh yeah, he hooked me. <laughs> <laughs> he made me build a trailer and everything. Yeah, with a brand new trailer. Yeah, you heard that. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So we're happy to do it. Anytime you guys need a tractor and trailer, just let us know. Thank you. We we have a number one help out. So. Good. So to the official okay. business. Yeah, to the official business. Okay. So I would like to have a motion to entertain um, the application for the pouring for the uh, yep, the pouring permit and the entertainment license. You have that motion. Second. Any other discussion from anybody else? All in favor? Aye. 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 So now that this is accepted, we will uh, send it down to the uh, ABCC for, for approval from them. And I don't think that there is anything here to sign from us at all. So no. it just. His hours are there, the two minutes. And your hours here. I have a question on that. Sure. Um, we're, we're starting off with these hours because we're not really sure how busy we're going to be. Yeah. And if we have to adjust those, how do we. Like it's so Wednesday. If, if we're really busy on Thursday and we want to slow it down a little bit on the Thursday and we want to open like on Wednesday, um, is there a way we can adjust those? Probably you, they have to let our office know. And right. Yeah, you'd have to, to let the have office have know. To have the okay. Yeah, and then yeah. she ha and then Karen has to let the ABC see okay. know about right. that. Great. Super, thank you. Super, welcome, and welcome to town, and I hope thank we you. see good thank success you. with the business. Thank you. Thank you You're welcome. Thank you. Cool. Are you going to be doing any stouts and quarters? I, 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 I do everything. Actually, I have a number of stouts and quarters. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So, so while we have a minute or two, um, in the case of CMRPC, that there will be a meeting on the 30th related to the Finney property. Okay. Mass development uh, will actually be in attendance. No, what, what is that? The 30th at 2 p.m. We just got an email earlier this afternoon. Yes, I think so. No, it's possible, but it is. All right. Do you have anything more to bring up before? I mean, yeah. I do have correspondence, but I thought we would wait. And we could ask him if you can, can take him early. No, we can take Eric early. Sure. Eric? Yeah. Oh, we're going to take, we'll take you. Why, Don, did you have something? Well, I was just wanted to talk about the town meeting. Yeah, but the, yeah, we're going to yeah. take it afterwards. Okay. We're going to have Eric, you want to come up, please? Sure. Mm -hmm. Should I sign in or not? Yes. Yeah. Please. Yes, please. Good evening. Good evening. This is. I'm Eric Weiss. Meet you. From the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Yep. Nice Great. Clarence. Hi, Eric. How are you? Okay. Eric is going to explain to us our. This is the Regional Municipal Accounting Service Agreement. It's a two year agreement by and between the Pioneer Valley Commission and the Town of Brookfield. And so All he's. Right. So let me answer a few questions, which are probably not people. Yes, that's yeah. what I was just going to say. If you can explain it and Forward. answer some questions. Yeah. No, I should take that chair. Uh, if you would. Sure. Get my good stuff. There we go. All right. So the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission serves the region, which is Hampshire and Hamden counties. Mm -hmm. But we have strong relationships with our sister agencies. Um, in this case, it would be the Central Massachusetts Regional Planning mm -hmm. Agency, which is in Worcester. And we work closely with them. Um, Connor and I talk, and we talk to their exec, our executive directors talk to each other and all that. And I guess the, the, the initial inquiry was made to them right. about whether mm -hmm. there could be help. Yeah. And then Connor sent me an email saying, can you guys help? And we have relationships with other towns in Worcester County. We have some relationships with towns in Franklin County. Um, in particular, Warren is a town that we're working with directly now. I was there yesterday. Mm -hmm because um, we're working on a regional animal shelter with a group of towns there. Um, and we've done their CDBG housing work for them. And I know we've done some work here on that as well. So if anybody's worried at all about whether the cross-jurisdictional nature of this is a problem, it's, no. not, it's perfectly legal and everything else. Then let me, let me answer the second question, which is that the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, Commission has a regional, IT, uh, regional accounting program. And what that really means is that we've done the bidding. We did all the work ahead of time. It's like using a state bid mm -hmm. or something like that. It's as if the town bidded itself. So we put out a bid that said we need the following sets of services provided for the communities that are participating in this. And so far, the towns of Blanford, Chesterfield, and Goshen, um, and Worthington are all using the program in our region. So when I got the call from Linda saying, you know, can you help us, the answer is yes, we have a program in place, we have a bid in place, and we have a vendor in place that you can use. So all of those things have been provided for to you. So um, in that sense, we try to make it as easy as possible. And all of that, again, is perfectly legal as long as the bidding process is done correctly, which it was. A number of the people at um, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, including my boss, are MCPPO certified, so everything is signed up. We have a chief officer for purchase chief, chief purchasing mm -hmm. officer to make confirm everything. So the agreement that I sent you um, for this is the relationship that will exist between the town of Brookfield and the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And it states, part of it states the um, fees that Eric Kinsher will provide to the town for the services that he's providing. Yeah. And part of it, is, and it's a very minimal part, is what we're 
Um, I have an extra copy of this. Have you got it on your phone? Yeah, All right. No, I do, do want it on my phone. Um, so, and, and the small part of it is um, the fees that we get for just managing the program. And we are a agency. We're a nonprofit. We're basically in the same mm -hmm. position as municipalities. We don't. Um, we're not in this to make money. We're in this to provide the service to the community. So, any of the fees that you see attached to any of our programs are cover my time or our, our business manager accounting time to make sure that all the billing is done properly. Everything's passed the snuff when the auditors come through. If the states want to look at our bidding records, we have all those things in place. So all of that is really just to make sure the management of the program is done properly. As I understand things, because um, we've met, we've talked and we've met, um, and I've met with Eric Kinsher now twice, mm -hmm. um, there were two distinct parts to this, one of, one of which was cleaning up what had been become difficult for the town because of the situation the town was in with its own account, which I won't go into here, mm -hmm. it's not my place yeah. to go mm -hmm. into it. Um, and the other part of it was to provide ongoing services once, not once, but ongoing services as well as straightening that out. And so there were two prices quoted by Mr. Kinsherf under the bid specifications, and one was $50,000 to do all the straightening out, and the other one for the long-term service was $40,000. Um, the cleanup is hours spent. I know he's already been here. There's already things that have occurred oh, yes. in terms of starting to straighten mm -hmm. things out. I have gotten nothing but rave reviews from the towns that use his services mm -hmm. um, in terms of how the quality of service, the responsiveness of service, the, uh, the detail that he goes to. He's, He's kind of a nerd when it comes to accounting and he enjoys being that. So that's a good thing. That's yeah. what you want from somebody like that. And he's fully willing to admit to that as yeah. well. And he's a fun guy to be around. Yeah. He's a good person. He is he's a nice, yeah. Um, so um, I, we feel good that we're offering this service to communities. We're perfectly happy to welcome Brookfield into this program. Um, and so the way that I wrote the agreement, and hopefully I got the language right, and you can certainly have your own town council review. Sure. I don't know if you okay. use KP Law or somebody else. But, yeah. It's been reviewed by the town councils, but I know it's in your best interest to do that, so I'm mm -hmm. sure it's been through yes. everything. Um, I tried to write the language inside the agreement with the town to um, convey the fact that there was going to be a phase one and two, which was all about cleanup and straightening mm -hmm. things out, and that phase three was all about um, the ongoing services you would get. So you can look at that in terms of months and timelines. The first few months, not only are you going to get ongoing services, but there's going to be a lot of cleanup. Eventually, the cleanup will be done, and it will be just ongoing services. Mm -hmm. um, the towns that are in the program, by and large, are a little bit smaller than you. You're allowed to ask me what they pay for annual fees. It's anywhere from twenty-eight to thirty thousand dollars. So this is consistent. The forty thousand is consistent yeah. with that for the size of the town, the mm -hmm. amount of activity that will be required. Um, I thought we had a really beneficial meeting the other day, in which we went over yes. a lot of this. We did. I urge the board to, to become part of our program. I'm happy to come back out here. I happen to live in Belchertown, so it's really not a big trip for me to come visit you guys anyway. Um, so I'm, I'm not really worried about that. Um, the scope of services is attached to the, uh, the agreement so that all the things that um, Mr. Kinsher has said he would do are in there. So I put in all the language. He has seen it and has okayed it. I need the board needs to take a second look at it or whatever, take a look at it and make sure it's okay. okay. The other thing is that um, in terms of managing and reviewing Mr. Kinsher, it just so happened that the day before he was here, he and I did his annual review under the contract provisions. So he was actually in the Springfield area the day before we spent a couple hours together reviewing all the details of the contract and services provided to the towns that he already had. And it went very well, but it's our obligation and due diligence to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the day after was the day that we met here. Um, so um, the other thing that I asked him to do in terms of his phase one, phase two, phase three is as far as our bookkeeping goes, he had to spell out more detail in terms of that so that we could keep track of what he was doing and make sure that there were milestones that could okay. be hit. So my plan going forward, once this is all in place, is for the town to stay in touch with me directly and him to stay in touch with me directly so we can monitor everything that's going on for you. If you need me out here on any given day or any given evening to have a further discussion, I'm happy to do it. Um, I look forward to this being beneficial to both the town and the and the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and Mr. Kincher. And I think in closing, what I would say is that, and you witnessed this as a board, yeah. and your finance committee has witnessed this and others in town, that managing small town government is a full-time business and requires different types of specific 
expertise. And we, part of the reason we created this program is that we have found at the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission that it is jobs like this, a municipal account does things a whole lot different than a private sector account. Mm, yes. There are very specific rules at the state level that have to be followed, and you can't deviate from those at all. And when you submit things, your different schedules and all the information that needs to be submitted to the state, it has to be done a certain ways. So you get your free cash certified and all the other things that the town mm -hmm. needs to do, your, your stabilization fund, um, your free cash certified, your stabilization amounts certified, all the things that are part of conducting the business of the town. And therefore, to have somebody, you know, 20 years ago or 30 years ago, you could have somebody who was skilled with numbers and come in and do it. And now it's even more than yeah, more specific yeah. training mm -hmm. that can be done. Um, that's just the reality of where we're at. Not to mention the software platforms that he can provide that allow you to link to the state even more efficiently and things like that. So it is becoming a specialized service. Offering it this way in a regional format with specialized skill sets on the part of that person, I think is a good way to go. I think it's good for the smaller towns. Yeah. You know, you're not you're not a bigger town, you're a smaller town, and it allows you that flexibility of working with somebody who can provide you the information you need. So it's our pleasure to help. It's a, I hope the board signs the agreement. I know you're already starting to move ahead. So yeah, I know Laurie, Laurie, who works for Eric. She's been in. This is her second weekend, and yeah. she's been in planning on coming in like two days a week. Yeah. And she's already been in contact with uh, Mary Jane Hand from the Department of Revenue. Yeah. And. Eric has already been in contact with her too. There's so there, that's Eric Kinsher. Yeah, the, yeah, that's what I meant. The other Eric's been in contact, and she and Mary Jane very highly recommends him. That's when I had first called her and told her we were having problems. She mentioned Eric right off yep. that we should get him. Yeah. So so far, from what I've seen, I've been very happy with it. Good, good, because he's, he's trying, he's trying to whatever win your guys' hearts, as it were, as it were, to yeah. help you out and make sure that this goes the way it's supposed to go. And I think, you know, six months to a year from now, you'll be able to look back and say this is all working the way it's supposed to work, yes. which is a good thing for the town, because you don't want to be in jeopardy in any other way. So. Okay. Any questions? From um, no, because I, I had reviewed the agreement before, okay. and I just reviewed it again while uh, Eric was speaking. Uh, did that, do you know, did the advisory committee get an opportunity to... Um, no, I don't understand what the scope of the agreement is. Well, we had, yeah, we had sent, I had sent them originally. I sent to Steve and Jeff. Oh, yes, they do have a, I'm yeah. sorry, they do have yes. a scope of service. They, they do have, have the service. scope because I sent yes. it to them. Yes, so Beth. Yes. I had, yes, I had sent it to them. Did, did you have, did, did you have any questions about the scope of services, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, that was okay. I mean, I, I just wanted to. I was hopeful the accountant would be here so we could ask them specific things, but I mean, since you're sort of the interface, that's the yeah. okay. I mean, I'm happy with your, your presentation. You know, again, I have no way to judge the fees or anything else, but, um, you know. We can bar fees as low as we possibly can. I'm sure you can. Yeah, we're an agency, and we're intended to be a service to the community we serve, though. So as you move through the process, um, yeah, um, Eric and his staff, Eric Kinsher and his staff will be available for questions. Uh, pro just a provision questions. that the uh, council yeah. will do. Yeah. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll say that. We're still working on that. Okay, so that's fine. Yeah. Right. So. You know, there's an attitude to for us to, to meet you and, and uh, understand the process. It was a little, little vague until we saw the, the contract and then meet you personally. So. Yeah, and then um, just so the uh, people in the room know, I have close to 35 years of municipal experience working for municipalities out in our meeting. Um, and I had the lucky task of being the chairman of the Dublin Town School Committee for eight straight years. So I've had budgets blown up, dropped on the town meeting floor, passed on town meeting floor. So I get the process. Some days it works really, really well, and some days you have the challenges you have to face. So, so I get it. Maybe it's I feel your pain is the right way to say it, but I do get it. So. Yeah. Well, the reality is, without this kind of service, small towns will, will suffer. Yes. And the mm -hmm. reality is, we fell into the trap as to trained and capable financial resources that no municipal. What we have now is the opportunity to have that trained and capable yeah. resource in place so that there's no question yeah. and that there, there will always be a backup. Yeah. So we trust in you to keep that. the ball rolling. Yes. Yeah. 
And, what, and what's nice now with um, the, Laurie, who was with us, she also does the town of Holland. So she's yes, very familiar yes. with the school systems, you know, how, how they, because we're not regionalized. So right. she understands all about that, the contacts, and she knows them all at the school. So that's another plus for us also. Absolutely. So I'd make a motion that we approve the contract subject to KP review. I'll second that. All in, any questions, Don? Just a quick question. Um, is this uh, require a town meeting vote? Is a funding? Is, no. It's all funded. No, no issues. No problem. So, so the from a funding perspective, we'll we'll need to reassign the remaining accountant no. uh, wages as well as the the annual audit funds. Mm -hmm. Um, which the, the way that that's structured would allow for the reconciliation to, to be in lieu of the audit. Awesome. Okay. Um, yeah. And then from a standpoint of next year, a discussion that I had uh, mentioned with, with uh, Mr. Gillis is that we need to <coughs> change the accounting uh, wages line to indicate accounting wages or services. And in essence, it'll fall within our, our current budget constraints. Great, thanks. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. That was easy. Doesn't happen often. So, so you so, want like I said, the Valley Planning Commission does appreciate um, working with the town. I mean, we've been in place for over 50 years working with communities in our region. And like I said, I've worked with communities for a long time. So and we have a, be, before you got here, I, I explained that uh, we were at CMRPC the other evening uh, for direct technical assistance on elderly housing, yep. and we were awarded that ten thousand uh, dollars. So I, I manage our GLT program for the Excellent. Valley Planning Commission. Well, Excellent. Thank you so much. I think so. Does he want to take the sign going back? It's all, hold on to it no, but she's Karen. You have a copy of this, right? To send yeah, into. Hold on to it until the review is complete. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, okay, then we'll get it off to him. We'll just mail it. I'm the scan. I'll just scan it. So, yeah, scan okay. it. Send it. And, and I guess I did. So I know. The school services had the contract with it, I think, or it was a separate email. But well, they cool. obviously got it. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for the time. Okay. Did the board need me for anything else tonight? I don't think so. I think it's well, time. To... For a so, drive. I'm yes. Home. Well, thank you very much, Eric, you, for helping us out with this service. It's a pleasure to work with the town. Okay. Appreciate it. You too. Thank, thank you. you. Keep the wheels on the bus. Okay. Do we want to do, um, hmm. Okay. Next on the agenda. Next on the agenda, we're having a joint meeting with the advisory board. And we are going to review the articles and open and close this uh, special town meeting and the annual town meeting. Let's do it. Let's do it. You want to sit over here, Steve? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But what I would like to start off with, though, first before we get into it, um, we talked at the last meeting, I think it was a meeting before, about not having uh, a lot of the towns were not having the special town meetings anymore, and um, all we have is one article to put on. And so we, I talked to Michelle Randazzo from KP Law, and she said if we put everything on the annual, you have to wait until the annual is concluded before the appropriations or other authorizations take effect. She said those articles planned for a special town meeting, if it goes two nights or more, voted on the initial or subsequent nights may not be effective until town meeting is finally concluded. So I think with, um, with the snow and ice deficit, we can wait for that. Yeah, I don't yeah. see why we couldn't. Yeah, and I think that's how, that's how she explained it. So, you know, if things, you know, as long as they're probably taken care of by the end of the year. Yeah. Because I think it's much easier to just include it all in one than to have a special. And what we'll be doing this year, we usually have the special at 6.30, but we are going to start the uh, annual town meeting at 6.30 instead. And then we'll probably want Karen to post an, another I'll joint meeting yeah. with the um, a joint meeting with the uh, selectmen and the advisory board also that evening for 6 p.m. That's already set. It's all set. Okay. All right. 
So I'd like to open the warrant again. Yep. That's on the 14th. Are you also going to keep the 21 at 7 p.m. on, on 6-21? Um, if we don't days. get through everything, we probably should keep, keep it. Yeah. Cancel if you get done. Can you okay. maybe see if we can start that at 6.30 also instead of 7? Well, I don't know. The school, I already I don't want to really. I could ask them, but. Don't ask. Ask. It doesn't hurt. Right. Ask. It doesn't hurt. All right. So we'd like to open the warrant again here, and um, I have something that. Uh, Can we talk logistics just for a second? Okay, sure, sure. So, so speaking of the two meetings, yeah, let's forge ahead. But if it gets to be like nine thirty, let's have a, an agreement that we because we have the second night, yeah, we just don't wear people out. Oh. So I, I would say that at least from with the moderator here. That at least at some point nine nine thirty, if if we see that it's going to go long, yeah. that we call it and move, make a motion yeah, to move good. to the twenty fourth. I, I think that that's a good that's a good evening time. Do you agree with that, Don? Sure. Sure. I think that's a good move. Good. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to reopen. So, so I'll make a motion to reopen the okay. work. Yep. Yeah. And I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We have a note here from the water department to um, take off, remove um, Article 16. The placeholder. Okay, the pl you had a placeholder on that. Yeah, I okay. just, just not in there. I didn't give you the, the Article 16 okay. draft. Okay. You have it in there. All right. So. Remove Article 16, you said? Yes. Was the, it was the original Article 16. It's not in, it's taken off of this. It's already out of it. Yeah, it's already off. Yeah. Okay. All right. So our first article here is um, this would it's for uh, we have a deficit in snow and ice, and it's thirty six thousand three hundred fifty eight dollars, and that would come from free cash. And so I'd like a motion to approve. Oh, motion. It's for, what? to recommend. So it. so uh, uh, well, I'll second it for discussion. Okay. But first of all, say? we need to change the verbiage to raise appropriate transfer or borrow and not mention free cash because we probably won't have it. Oh, oh yes, Karen. Yeah, Stable well, that, that's oh. how they sent it to me, but we'll. Okay, it yeah, should be probably take it from stabilization. Right. Well, right, but the best way to do it is just use the generic yeah. verbiage. Yeah. Okay. So we'll raise appropriate transfer or okay. borrow, okay. and then. Um, a sum of amount, a sum of money uh, to snow and ice account, and then we can delineate the account in the motion. Okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't even think when I saw the free cash, so that that was a mistake on my part. Last year, so. Okay. So is, is is this the 16 fiscal year 16? Snow no, this is FY19. 19. 19. FY19 snow and ice. I'm looking at 16 on this. On this one, it says 19. Okay. You put it in the Say again. Are you looking at the new one? No. Oh, yeah. Let me give you We're looking at the one we received at our meeting the other day. I didn't look at the one here. Yeah, that was, the, that was the, the draft draft before anything got. Is this over? Nice. And so they start with 75000 This is in addition to that. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's all? This year it only went over by 36000 Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good so, news. Yeah. So we'll vote to put this on. We we yeah. recommend it. Yeah, we recommend. We, we recommend, recommend it. to do it. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Steve, it's your turn with your board. All right. We get to approve this. I move we support the uh, article regarding the snow ice account that's written. Second. Approve. Aye. 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 Did you want that as written or as amended? As, I apologize, uh, that should be as recommended. So, should we re vote on that? Or? I wouldn't think so. No, I don't okay. think so. Okay. And then the next ones are just, you know, articles that are on here every year. And then we always like vote um, one vote here for article Two, three. four through ten. And then the next one here, Article 11. Or this, do you want to hmm? do you want to just do the? So I'll make the, a motion to uh, place the Article 2 through 10, yeah. um, as indicated in the draft warrant. To recommend okay. It. And, rec and recommend. All right. We recommend. want to go into 11 because that's a that's basically we do that every year also. Those figures are correct. I checked it. Hmm. 
those figures are still the same. Yeah. So. So it's eleven, not ten. Yeah. Why don't we go? Uh, yeah. Why don't we get two, two and through eleven? Two through eleven, to to both uh, place and recommend the standard articles. You're so that's your motion. Yeah. I've seconded it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'd like to do your motion to uh, recommend the faculty articles 2 through 11. And as, 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 written. Very well. as written. Very well. Second, all in favor, aye. Aye. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay, you can we'll move on to Article 12. This is um, to raise and appropriate or the sum of, of a dollar. No, I won't even say it. I'll say it. A sum of a dollar to plow private roads. Motion to uh, approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Your turn, Steve. Uh, motion to, uh, to approve uh, Article 12. I swear. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Article 13 is um, to raise and appropriate a sum of money to fund the road construction and reconstruction account. And that is something that is done every year. And um, I have a figure here of 35,000, if that is what yeah. we're, I don't know if that's so motion Motion to approve this yeah. article. Motion to, to approve. To sponsor, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll second with a little discussion. Okay. Um, I just want to remind everybody that the dollar amounts are a guideline. So if by the time we get to town meeting, yeah, we have a balance yes. mm -hmm. um, or we have concerns about where we're sitting against our revenue, we can always mm -hmm. adjust the amount. Like if we want to bring it up to a certain amount because we have a specific project yeah. in mind, exactly. we have that flexibility. So let's go yeah. ahead and leave this on so we can make that judgment in okay. closer to the meeting. So then we'll we'll talk later about at another meeting where we're going to get the funds for these different right, things. Exactly. Right, exactly. And, okay. and I and hope we'll have at least a few weeks of the accountant agency yes. in here and we may mm -hmm. at least have a more clarity on what our current balances yes. are in that account mm -hmm. but we might want to communicate to them that specifically there's certain balances we want to understand that we have and that yes. may be one of them okay i will one. okay now is 14. uh no, this is should we vote oh, that? we'll want yeah we'll vote that so it's a motion to to support, for support. support. all in favor aye, aye. Steve. Article 13 motion support. You have it. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The next one is Article 14, and this is to um, raise appropriate a sum of money to purchase protective clothing air bottles for the fire department. Motion to approve. Or support. Uh, uh, I'll second yep. to support, but I'd, I'd like just a tiny bit of discussion. Can we go ahead and and um, I'd like to see the verbiage on this as well as on Article 13, and we might need to revisit it to to use the full verbiage of raise appropriate transfer or borrow. So that if we choose to take that out of stabilization depending at the, on the funding levels that we're, we're planning mm -hmm. on recommending, yeah. Yeah. that the verbiage reflect that we have that option. Yes. Excellent. Okay, motion, and so, so any more discussion on this one? A motion to support uh, with the uh, amendment, amendment. amendment 12 as well. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Steve, it's on to you. Um, do I hear motion to support as recommended and as amended? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As amended. That's it. Correct. Do you have it? Good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Article 15. Now, is the advisory board, are they familiar with Article 15 for the, from the school? Um, the short answer is, um, mm -hmm. you, you know, we, a couple of questions we had were who sponsored, what's the impact to the town, what's yeah. the maximum cost of yeah. for, um, you know, is this the amount of money actually necessary? So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, it, I had talked to No, De we weren't really familiar yeah, okay. with this to answer your question. Because Deb Boyd had sent out emails, right, Karen, back in January. 
She well, sent a deck it forwarded to these guys? Um, yeah, I'm sure she did. I'm sure, because I've been in contact well, with actually, them. actually, I don't know. I'm trying to think. I, I'm not sure, but I know you did get the article. Oh, yes. You did get the email because yes. I remember you requested it. I believe you requested it. Um, the thing is, now we know it's approximately $1,000. Yeah. We didn't know that back then. That was one of the questions in, I had. Say it again. Now we know that it will cost Brookfield approximately $8,000, which I noted on this. Linda found that out from talking yes. to Deb. Tip Boyd. And, information. And, 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 that's, and that's annually for how many years? Just the one. The one, I think. I thought she said, and she months. said the payment wouldn't start until FY21. That's when we would see it. Well, I understand that, but that would, the payment not starting until 21 implies that it would be a multi-year commitment. Well, she will be at, she will, they will be at uh, the annual town meeting to explain more of this. Or if you want me to give her another call, I will. That'd be great. Or if you want me to call her. No, great. I'll call her because I've been working with her on this. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah, that'd be yeah. fabulous. Yeah, I so this is, this is not a motion, an article to raise two million dollars. No, no, no. The school is the, yeah, the right. school is doing. One time pop. But we don't have we to. We believe that. I believe that. Yeah, okay. we're not doing. We're not raising this money at this meeting. What we are is just approving of the article because, like I said, it won't take effect until FY twenty one. Yeah, there is significant, we did have a discussion around this at, at the CIPC meeting and yeah. the Kathleen yeah. Hosterman was there. Um, her primary concern is both a, a safety and a, a heating issue, the, the condition of some of the doors, they get photos and stuff of exactly how bad it is currently. A bunch of them are rotted out pretty significantly. I guess the metal's just kind of deteriorating on, on all of the metal doors. Um, and uh, it is, um, a, I don't know that it's a safety hazard yet, but it's certainly an energy efficiency mm. issue as well. Is there a cost, like savings or a cost offset or something like that? Do they talk about that? There's a grant that yeah. they're getting. Right. They're it's getting, a grant getting, that they're getting. Grant money. Yeah, they're getting 56% of it, in essence, 55% of it paid for uh, I, by the state. I believe Steve's request for about a, an offset was more, how much are we going to save per year in energy? I, I, I don't that, know. It's like well, that, yeah. this is something you'll have to talk to Deb Boyd about. And that's what I'm happy to talk to her about. It. I, I will say that they're asking for authorization to borrow $2 million, saying that, that that's going to be paid off with one $8,000 payment, which is what I thought I heard you say. That's what it's I said. This, that was my understanding, too. So I would like more information. Uh, okay. I'm pretty sure that's the annual. Annual, but it can't be for yeah. very long. Okay, so I will. Um, I think no, it's 10 seven, year. Seven, is it 10 year? Is it Yeah. If you want to email her, I can give her a buzz either way. Karen. I don't know. I don't know the term at all. Okay. I'll just straight up tell you I don't know the term. I'm just. No, I'm sell the map I'll, I'll contact her tomorrow and I'll, I'll send all the information yeah. directly <laughs> to you. The email she yeah. sends. I mean, me just because, like most things, we're just. You so know, we if don't we explanation. We're, we're, we're much better off than just verbiage like and, this. And, just and that's what we said too. And she said yeah. that she would explain at the meeting. By yeah, that's what she said. She'd explain at the time. meeting, so people understood just what this was. Because I think. The town. Hmm? Yeah, 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 it's at the town. annual town right. meeting. We should have the. Okay, we should certainly have it prior to that. If she's looking for support, so yeah. we look forward to hearing from her and having more information yet. Okay, so I. Uh, Take the vote. It sounds great conceptually. It's just the details. We just sure. Yeah. So, so I ask a motion you, to I support. I have a motion to support because we're going to fix some doors that yes. are rotted. Yeah. I mean, let's well, get it's, serious. It's a, it's a five year borrowing. Oh, it request. is. Okay. So it's, it's, a, it's a five year so commitment. So 40000 bucks. So it's basically $40,000 over the course of five yeah. years. Here it is. So I'm sorry, I found the original email from May 7th. Um, and it, it states uh, specifically uh, they will not know a true cost uh, projection mm. until May. Um, they've submitted their article with the maximum figure of $2 million, but there's a likelihood it'll be between 1.5 and 2, so it may be as much as 25% less. Uh, but at the $2 million level, um, when you split out Brookfield's share, it's a, it's a five-year borrowing request. Um, and for us, that five-year commitment is, is $8,000 a year in order to get the $2 million. 
So effectively, that's a worst case. That is a worst case. Is at the most, and that's expected. And is that eight thousand dollars predicated on any grant money coming in, or is it that's predicated? predicated no, yeah. that's predicated on the fifty, like five point six three percent coverage. That Fifty-five, that's six. Yeah. That's, that's worst case project cost, but it's expecting the grant to correct mitigate the cost that Tank Capital is playing. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's, that's helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. So do we approve to put this on the warrant? Absolutely, yes. yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Consider that. Well, you have to control the y'all control the warrant book. So, um, what we can do is I can forge you this original email, send it to the two of you, and then um, if you needed any additional details for the text for the warrant book, you can add whatever you care to. If like you could probably send the verbiage over to Deb and ask her if it's an accurate representation, and then she can tell you for sure one way or the other. Does that work? Sounds like a plan. I mean, my yeah, that works. Does it? Okay. It, it does because if new information comes up, we can raise it on the floor and and make changes there if necessary. Very well. So we have a motion to support the article. And, and, and should, should we be saying we we will amend it if necessary? Sure. Sure. And amend it necessary. Do I hear motion? I'll second the motion. All in favor of that? Aye. Aye. And uh, just so you know, just so you can indicate, um, if you're indicating support or non-support of the capital improvement, capital improvement did support that unanimously. Okay. How about the one from the school? No. What other yeah. ones? That Any other? One. Yeah, that's the other one. I just sent it to you. I did it already, yes. Okay. Because I'll forget if I don't do it right this second. Okay. okay. So oh, now, CIPC report team 13 of, uh, over 10,000. Yeah, that's so. what I meant. Do they approve of those also? I think we're all up to 17 now. Well, we are up to 17. And just no, no. also information. 16. No, did, yeah, did, did they support 13 we, and 14? We deleted 16. CIPC, do you know? CIPC, did they approve? It was a different 16. Yeah, so, CIPC, yeah. so, so CIPC supported the road reconstruction okay. if placed. Yeah. Okay, and how yeah, about that's what I was about 13. to say. And how about 14? Uh, the the yeah. air bottles, yeah. um, they supported that as well, though they did, um, they did ask that um, if, depending on the financial state, that we scale the yeah. amount based on what's actually critical. Because what okay. Kathy went over with us that she was working with Peter on that, and that um, a certain percent of them is absolutely required right now. Mm -hmm. But the, but that um, we we might be able to delay a portion of the purchase. Okay. So that would be a dollar value we'd get closer into town okay. meeting. But they did support having it on there. Okay. Okay. They and they recommend. They recommend passing it. They just yeah. were open to. Okay, so I'm gonna say this. All right. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm, if they have any questions, I'm yeah. Okay. Now, Article 16 will have to I'm make. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I oh. thought that was the 16 we were talking and about. And again, all these will, that say raised and appropriate will say transfer. Yeah, that's what I was yeah, just yeah, gonna yeah. say. The oh. amend. We'll just okay. have. That's what I was oh. gonna state. Okay. This one is. Um, it's from a state mandated emergency action plan for Sawmill Pond. Yeah, we need to support it. And we need to support this because it, the mandate requires an emergency action plan, if you all are reading along, for significant hazard dams, which Sawmill Pond is one. The emergency action plan must be completed by December 2019. Motion to support. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do I have a motion to support Article 16? Okay. Motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. When did we get that one in? Hmm? When did we get that one in? Oh, she that one that one came in with the holidays. Yeah, almost in the first of it. Yeah, that's been in since the that's beginning. Yeah. All right, because I don't see anything on it from the uh, capital improvement. Well, because it's eight thousand dollars. Eight thousand. Is that why? 
Oh, that's possible. Yep, that's why. Okay. Thank you. And um, the next one is put on by petition. It's um, to put a additional lighting throughout the town with the location and types of these lights to be determined by the selectmen. So we have to also put this on also. So I'd like a motion to put this on the button. Yeah, we put it on and, and I'd further take it that we would support because back to we may have uh, space and the numbers of lights that we have okay. and that may be the, uh, a way to satisfy the petitioners as well as the town. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Do Steve? we know how many lights and recurring costs and will become part of the operating budget? So, so, so recurring cost, average recurring cost for uh, most of our street lights is anywhere from, from $12 to $15 a month uh, per light. Uh, the installation costs, I don't know what the poles are. I know what replacement, the replacement costs are, are usually on the order of a few hundred dollars, but the depends on, on what the, if there's any pole installation or, or what have you. So that would, I think the $2,000 is variable. It might get you anywhere from, from three to probably eight lights, depending on if it's long arm, short arm, right. Uh, right. What, what LED, you know, if they're doing LED or, or conventional. We just went through, I think right before Herb left, he did a replacement of yeah. a bunch of the street lights mm -hmm. with LED, but, so. but the yeah. fixtures are more expensive. Yeah. Um, so the, the short answer is that's why the petitioner is leaving it to the selectmen is to worry about the, the math and the yeah. placement. Okay, that's was my next question. Yeah. Any other questions? Do we have any information? I don't understand where these are going and what studies or what basis there is for the desire for these lights to be put in. It doesn't make sense. We, and I'll say, I've heard discussion about this. Uh, when we had a meeting, someone thought that it might be going into the intersection of Mill Street and Fisdale Road. And I will say, I don't want a light there personally because at night, you want the headlights to be able I to want see. The to tell me about yeah, this. that's right. So it's like, so that was there a study that, about this. I don't want to put it in because someone thinks it's a good idea. So so so, 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 for, so so here's the deal. We it's a citizens' petition, so we have, have to, to put it on. It. Yes, okay, we have to. Now whether we support it or not, the, you are citing exactly the reason why I fought this when it was in a specific street lights last year, and that was one of yeah. the specific. It was the same thing it. last year. Because, and, and, and my concern is, is they do have some studies that in rural areas, lighting like that, that's isolated lighting, that's not contiguous lighting, can actually cause rather than assist drivers from a safety perspective. So we don't have a study. Some of this money might wind up going to the type of line of sight study that would determine whether or not um, we should even go with putting the light in there. Um, and if we have to do a study, it's most of the money would wind up going to the study. But then you'd barely have money, any money left for even one light. But then we'd know where the lights But then would we would know what to go. Yeah. Correct. There was a sense that it wants to go across the Murphy Bridge. That's, mm -hmm. I believe, what the, the intended petitioner would like. Yeah, that's right. So. Uh, a question based on the wording. If this motion passed on the floor as worded, is that do the selectmen and the highway department have discretion as to where the lights go? Yes. Yes. That's, yes. that's yes. my understanding yeah. also. And therefore, I would trust our elected and professional representatives to make sure that the placement is supported by science. There we go. Noted. <laughs> so. And if not, I know where to find you. So we have a motion to place. Yes, a motion to place it on. And, and to support, yes, we, have, support. We, have we have to support it. We have, yeah, yes. we did. Now it's so whether we recommend it or not. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to recommend it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And now it's up to you guys. Do I hear a motion to support what? Article 4, what is it, 17? 17. 17. <laughs> to support it so that it's on the board. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion. Second motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna bundle the next three, even though one of them is um, technically a, a capital yeah. improvement, but it's it, all three of them are transfers yes. from the ambulance fund. So I'll make a motion that we both place and recommend Article 18 through 20. Okay. Do you have that second? Okay. 
Do we have any discussion from anybody here? All in favor? Aye. 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 Steve. I'd like to make, <clears throat> see if anyone makes the same motion to bundle Article 18, 19, and 20 and pass it as one. Well. Okay. Second. Discussion. I think it's a great idea. Let's do it. I heard. So I don't want the bus members. breaking down on my way to the yeah. hospital. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, see, even though it's a transfer, see, I see wait. Yeah, did they approve of these? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, we unanimously supported yeah. the ambulance. Because it yeah. comes from their, it comes from their um, revenues anyway. Yeah. 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 Okay, now the 21. next one, Article 21 and 22, these are placeholders from the planning board. And I don't know if we want... Well, motion to motion, place, yes. for sure. Well, motion to place these, these two on. see them? You can ask Sharon. Mm -hmm. Sharon is right here. She's the chairman of the planning board. No way. The order of these um, two zoning bylaw amendments, which is what these are for, has not been determined yet, but they are in total. Um, a zoning bylaw amendment to add solar, large scale commercial solar arrays to the zoning bylaws specifically, with a set of recommendations and uh, conditions that are required for any applicant for these types of installations. Um, this has been an outgrowth of some of the permits that we've had to um, approve and a lot of the conditions that are going to be on them and um, the type of data that is required to be um, submitted for these permits has been a, an outgrowth of the type of things we have asked applicants up till now and the difference with this is it will it will codify these requirements into the town bylaws so that basically we're creating a level playing field Everybody will be required to submit the same information. Everybody will be subject to the, me, the same conditions. And the town will have in writing what the town wants from applicants without having to come on an individual basis before the planning board or to ask individual town departments and perhaps get different answers. Um, there are some provisions for not only the large scale but placement of smaller arrays as well. And one of the things we have sought to do is to clear the decks for people who might want to put smaller arrays in so they would know exactly what's required of them as well. Where we are with that petition as well as the next one which is on regulating marijuana businesses is we had our required public hearing last night. Unfortunately no one showed up but we turned it into a working meeting where we um, refined the final draft of the marijuana um, bylaw draft. And what we're going to do now is submit both of those to town council, and I can also simultaneously submit that draft to the advisory board with an understanding that town council is going to weigh in it as well. And that way you'll be able to read both drafts. If they're multiple pages. Unfortunately, these things tend to run in excess of five or six pages. Each. But that's the nature of the beast. Um, as far as the marijuana regulations go, this is basically a move to keep um, to allow marijuana businesses within a certain area of town in what is known as an overlay district, which is a district that is overlaid on top of the current tax maps. And those businesses would be allowed to apply for permits within that overlay district. Um, there are some constraints we're under in that because the town in the statewide vote that they took about marijuana businesses in general, in legalizing marijuana because this town voted in favor of it we are not allowed to prohibit any marijuana businesses in town unless the town wanted to hold another town-wide vote on that one subject if the town felt strongly about oh we've changed our mind we want to prohibit marijuana businesses that would be the way they would have to go about it but as the vote stands now and the town did vote to along with the rest of the state to allow marijuana businesses, we are not allowed to prohibit them. The provision that we have in the bylaws does allow a maximum of two separate businesses within that overlay district. And the scope and the scale of those businesses is described in the bylaw. 
Um, there, are, there are also um, references made to the state laws and the state board of health laws. So there are two things happening here. One of them would be to regulate adult use recreational marijuana mm -hmm. and to allow for a maximum of two businesses in, in town. The second would be to bring this business, this proposed type of business, in congruence mm -hmm. with the existing bylaw for medical marijuana. We have basically proposing to combine the two bylaws because there are different circumstances for both and it would make sense to put it under one bylaw. So that is also laid out in the draft and um, it also, the references to all of the state regulations there as well. Uh, if I may, I do have just a couple sure. quick questions. Sure. Um, the first one is, is that we had a highly restrictive um, distance on our on our overlay or or safe distance in our medical marijuana bylaw would that be mitigated in any way by the overlay district as defined currently in the draft bylaw? Just for the benefit of people here who weren't here for that vote, we, when we enacted the medical marijuana bylaw, we instituted as um, we uh, proposed a 500 foot buffer between any type of church, school, playground, anything that had to do with the activities of children. That 500 feet would, uh, a business would not be allowed within 500 feet of those entities. <coughs> much like liquor stores are not currently allowed within a certain distance of those same type of businesses. On the floor of the town meeting, an individual got up and gave an impassioned speech about children and how he was against the legalization of any type of marijuana, I believe is how it was put. And he proposed, and the town voted to expand that buffer zone to 2,500 feet rather than 500 feet. In other words, a five-fold increase in the proposed state-recommended 500-foot buffer mm -hmm. zone. Unfortunately, this had the net effect of reducing the overlay district to one property on one part of South Maple. And we are indeed very fortunate that the Attorney General, when reviewing this bylaw after it was voted in, did not accuse the town of trying to basically get by the prohibition of us prohibiting marijuana of any kind. Because if you enact a bylaw that effectively disallows almost all of the business in town, you are bypassing the law that says you will allow it. Right. Mm -hmm. So if the same thing happens on the town floor again, again, we could be under the scrutiny of the AG. And the AG has been very, very meticulous, shall we say, in this. trying to keep towns from getting around this type of state law if the town had voted in favor of those type of businesses. And I can say this with confidence because it took them approximately seven months to review the town vote on the moratorium on marijuana. Seven months it took them. It was only approved, and this was the one that was approved last annual meeting, it was only approved last month. They wanted to make sure, and we had to provide evidence that we were working on a final bylaw, that we were having meetings, that we were doing everything the state said about, mandate, uh, about bringing new bylaws bef before the town. They wanted evidence that we were actually working on this and not just using it as a delaying tactic or a way to prevent these businesses from coming to town. Mm -hmm. I can't say that. If it comes no, no. from the floor, it will be up for a vote. Oh, but it's recommended. It's it's the, recommend, the recommended distance was 500 feet, and that is what we're going with. And oh, it would, that, yeah, that's fine. Right. And it I would bring the medical marijuana buffer In zones, as it were, back to 500. Okay. So that they would be identical mm -hmm. for both adult recreational use and for medical. Gotcha. Thank you. And the current, if it were that 500, mm -hmm. you're referring to an overlay district with two businesses within that overlay. Or it has so, would so, there so, be option for so, two so, businesses? So in other words, the maximum amount of business, regardless, let, let, let's say it's just the 500 yard, <coughs> is two businesses That's in the correct. town program. That's correct. Because of the overlay or because we just want two businesses and that's that? We would specify that a maximum of two businesses would be allowed in town and that they would have to fall within the overlay district and that overlay district would include a 500 foot buffer around the types of um, entities, church, school, playgrounds, et cetera, that I mentioned before. So, motion to place yes. and to recommend. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 
And if you want to hold off on voting on this, I totally understand, and I can get you drafts tonight. Now that we finally come up with the draft that we're coming that we're sending to town council, that's up to you. Well, uh, I, do I hear a motion to place? I will do the vote to place only uh, the uh, the planning board's bylaw changes on the warrant. Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. Anyone opposed? There you go. Thank you. And we'll look at these and recommend review as far as we're concerned. Yeah, we're we'll recommending. Can I send the drafts to you so you can distribute to your list? Is that okay, wonderful. Okay, yeah. I'm thank happy you. to do that. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Oh, I did have one other question. I'm oh, so sure. sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, what about um, the agricultural aspect? Is, is that considered separately from the commercial not, endeavors? We researched that, and the state, the, the state of yeah, wisdom has exempted marijuanas from being marijuana farms or businesses from being considered agricultural concerns. Yep, they're not. So if someone came into town and said, "I want to have a marijuana farm and it's an agricultural activity," yeah. the state says, "No, you cannot count You're, it as an agricultural activity." Thank you exactly. very much. Yep. Moving on to Article 23, this is another one. This it's a citizen petition, and it's to add a new bylaw that would become Chapter 2, Section 22 of the town's bylaws, and reads as follows: Prior to setting the tax rate each year, the town of Brookfield must hold a town meeting for citizens to consider an article on the amount of free cash to be used to reduce the tax rate. I'd like a motion to place this on a the motion ballot. to place and not to recommend. Second. Because it takes the advisory board's yeah, it does. powers Perfect. away. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do I hear a motion to support the placement of this article? Yeah. And do we are we are we voting to support it as well? Let's separate those. Okay. Motion to place. Second. Great. Um, we were very split on this matter as far as uh, supporting it. Um, motion to support the article. That's great. Uh, all right. We got a motion. Any? Is there a second to support? It? We do not have a second. So we do not support. There is no. I'm not sure what that oh, is. Well, that. you could uh, you could per, you could you could have somebody second and then put it down. That's your other option. Is there a, or is there, is there a motion to not support? I move we not support it. Mm. Second. Do we have a second? Okay. All in favor of not supporting. Can we say? Can we discuss it? Okay. Can we say yes? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just like to explain. I like the idea of considering using free cash for the beginning of the tax rate. I do not like how that idea is implemented in this proposed bylaw mm, change yeah. because the use of the free cash, we can use it to mitigate the tax rate and we can use it to fund projects. This is effectively putting the giving tax tax rate abatement first dibs at it in a special town meeting that is unlikely to be well attended. I think that the consideration of the disposition of free cash, all the options should be considered at once. That has typically been at the annual town meeting where we can decide, you know, we have how much free cash we have, and we have these projects on the table, and we can decide which projects we fund and which projects we don't. I like the idea of doing it all at once and not divvying it up in a special town meeting that is unlikely yeah. to be. And that is why I think that this bylaw proposal is not something I can support, although I like, I, I think the objective is good, I think the implementation is flawed, and that's why I don't support it. But yeah. you have a job as the Finance or Advisory Board to in fact implement a recommendation, and we would look to Which that. Which we can do from the floor. Absolutely. Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do it tonight. Oh, no. Would anyone like to add anything to Mr. Reagan? Mm -hmm. We just have one question to you. What is the tax rate set? It's usually December of each year. Yeah, December. Beginning of December. Yeah, because the tax because <coughs> the tax once you set the rate, 
the tax and you know they got all the bills going you have to have it out before December 31st so that would mean that we would need to have a special town meeting to discuss this probably in December well, mm. Probably like November. Yeah, November. That's when we usually do. It. <coughs> or, or the way that it, it, the way that it could roll, the way, and and one of the other flawed things in the structure of this is that it depends on on which free cash, right? So there are some towns some that here. are on cadence that they have no, no, their free cash this. back prior to like, like that we would close our say 2019 Take books in, in. in July or August and already have free cash back in time for setting our tax rate in December, but not spend it until the following year. Historically speaking, we haven't been filing for our free cash prior to the tax rate. So the free cash that we would apply to our tax rate would be the, the year prior's free cash. So it really would force a, an additional town meeting unless we applied it at the annual town meeting at June and already made that decision long before we, we had everything else set for the tax rate. It's just very much off cycle. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, as, um, there are a number of citizen petitions. Does the town clerk provide the moderator with a copy of those and the signature pages? Uh, each one? No, you don't have, no, I don't think, uh, no, he doesn't provide. Just the petition. Just the petition. It could, because it's no, no, no he, just, it, just be on the warrant. He won't give you the, he won't give you what he got. Excuse me. He will not give you the original petition. You will just get it as it is written here. Okay, so he is already yeah. certified. Yes, he's that, already certified. Yes, yes, he's already certified these. Okay. Does the person that submits it have to have to make the presentation? Yes. Okay. They have to do, make the presentation. All right. They have to read the motion. Yeah, they have to, yeah, and they're the ones that does all the, I mean, you read it, and then they make the motions, and they tell why that they wanted this on. Yeah, they get right. to speak and, first. And I can, they get to speak first. Yeah. And I can also tell you that the uh, petition on the free cash was not supported by CIPC. Okay. We have a motion second uh, all in favor. All in favor. Non supported. Non supported. Aye. Aye. No. No. So is it unanimous? I think no, no. It's going to be six, seven. Six to, one. six to one, right? Yeah, six to one. Thank you. Article 24. You're all done now with 23? Okay, Article 24 is another petition. At citizen position, it is to change the town bylaws to include a full time position of town administrator. The town administrator will work directly under the administration and policy direction of the Board of Selectmen and will oversee the daily operations of town government. Motion to place. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And now we want a motion to support. Well, I'll give the motion to support. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Okay. Okay. No, no. Good. No. That's good. Um, do I hear a motion to support the placement of Article 24 for for the um, town administrator? You have the uh, second. All in favor? Please. Okay, so two, two abstains and what is it, five? Yeah, five yeses. In favor of supporting um, Any motion to support? I'll make a motion in favor of supporting it. Second? Se second for discussion. Discussion. Go ahead. All right. I think that writing, I, again, Good idea. I'm not a fan of the implementation. I think that if before we write the bylaw, we should identify, we should understand what the town what this town administrator position would entail, and better understand it before we go off and write a bylaw. Because I think we should, as a town, we should come to consensus on what this position would entail and whether we want to pursue it before we write bylaws for it. We're put, I, I feel we're putting the cart before the horse by writing the bylaws at this stage. I understand what they're trying to do. It makes some sense to me. 
but not yet. There, I, could I just say one thing? There was probably quite a few years ago, there was a study. Huh? 2011. 2011, there was a study committee that was put together whether or not the town needed one, and they felt at that time the town did not need a town administrator. That's not true. Huh? That's not no. accurate. The, the recommendation of the committee was that, that we needed one, and it was the selectmen at the time that Oh, I that thought did that the committee. No. No. I no. That was 2011. Oh, I thought it they did. It was unanimous. In 2011, they did support it? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that yeah, they didn't support. Yeah, I apologize. I didn't mean that. It, it's just yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't. I thought that they didn't support it. Ken. Who made this study? Here? Who, who has this? Who has this study? Um, I don't even know uh, who. Was. The personnel board. They, uh, actually, it wasn't the personnel board. It was a special was a committee. Special committee. Yeah. I believe it was five members. Yeah. Uh, they presented it to the selectmen, and the chairman said, "We don't need this," and threw it away. Oh. That was the end yeah. Of the who was who was There's chairman no then? Who was on the board back then? Uh, the chairman was. Uh, Steve I'm, I'm looking oh, for a copy, okay. but I may have it in like a. I may have had it forwarded to me from somebody years ago. Uh, yeah. A couple we, of years. We asked for copies of it, and no one could find it. Madam Chair, I have a hard copy if you'd like it. You do? Yes, yeah. I would like a hard would copy of it, Chairman, because if you we have. We have a solid copy either. We were just told the study was done. In yeah, we were just told the study was done, and Files it didn't. From town and it wasn't committee. recommended. You worked for us to get a copy because that's I think the fiscal. Seems we are. Yes. Uh, just to clarify, so I was the one that, that circulated the citizen petition uh, recommending this bylaw change. Uh, the reason why I wrote it this way was to create the position in the bylaw, uh, figuring that uh, not looking for money, not looking to fund it, uh, and would work with a selectman to probably appoint uh, somebody responsible to write a job description, which could be uh, done prior to the annual uh, spectrum of the fall. I found it. Uh, so that was that was the rationale mm -hmm. to make a placeholder for the position, create the position. Uh, if it doesn't get funded, it doesn't. You don't end up with one. Doesn't that seem like a lot of work for something that doesn't get funded or somehow? I think it's ridiculous not to have an administrator. This is a $9 million business, business. that's run part-time. Yep. That's my personal opinion. That's not, no offense to anybody. Not hurting my feelings. It is a <laughs> $9 million, $8 million business, whatever the current budget okay. is. I, I found a soft copy of the report. Okay. My, my only point, and I, I respectfully disagree, is that I, at certain points in time, I think you need to throw stuff out and just get it done <clears throat> rather than wait for everything to move along because if this was done in 2011, I mean, the information is there, so obviously someone has it, but at least if we have something concrete in the bylaws, and we can go back, form a committee, whatever, study the recommendations, we've got a whole new administration in hand and, and see where we go with it, rather than delay another year, wait for the next town meeting, and, and we're, you know, we're, we're basically in more or less the same situation. The other thing that I will have to do mm -hmm. is recruit myself from yes. this in order, and so I'll have to ask Mike uh, to act as the moderator mm -hmm. while he can. I present this. Yeah. So uh, just uh, that's why I want okay. to talk with Mike as well. Yeah, he can. He can do that. Town clerk can preside. I, I've been looking, reading some of the information about uh, moderators' duties and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. It did say that you could yes. you could step aside. Mm -hmm. and yes, that's it. true. I got a question, Madam Chairman. Yes. How is this? How how is this extra expense to our town going to help our town have an administrator? A town manager dictates and runs the town and makes sure everybody's. But this is an administrator. It's not a manager. Young, the town manager is the one who actually takes control and makes sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. This administrator is still going to be getting direction from you three. We what what almost what. Mrs. Train or Cameron Train with us, am I right? She's almost an administrator now for crying out loud. Well, she. She's an assistant. She's an assistant, but she's on the title. But this town administrator is still going to be getting direction from you three. But am he, I correct or am I incorrect? Oh, you are correct, because that's how so, the, I mean, that's how it's written. So, if you want something done, you, you pass it on to Cameron Train, and then she 
delegates and does it. Yeah. Well, why are we going to have a town administrator? Well, be, maybe you should have Mr. Taft talk to no, that well, because no, no, no. she has no stop, stop. responsibility no. whatsoever stop, for stones. personnel management, which is my, no. to my way of thinking is probably one of the most critical things in town uh, is, is managing the personnel that are here elected or, or hired or whatever. Karen uh, is, is, is an uh, assistant. She is not an administrator. She doesn't have that responsibility. A manager, yes, would oversee everything above and beyond um, the relegation of, of the Board of Selectmen. I don't think you can afford to add uh, a manager. that position to start with. But I do think that an administrator will, will pay for himself, his or herself, uh, in, in many ways. I mean, it's going to cost you money? Yes, there's absolutely no, no doubt about it. Well, what do you, you, you project the cost would be with benefits, of course? Out of the budget, what do you think it's going to cost us for the town? 80 grand. Hmm. 85. Not with benefits, no. We're going to get a college kid, and he's going to be here for three years, and he's going to say, that's why oh, I... That's kind of the... Let's move it to the that's town. That's kind of what happens hmm? in any town. Yeah, no, we're not any we're okay, we're, we're going to, and, and yeah. yeah. can we, can we stop? Sure. Okay, no okay. more discussion, because we have to move on yeah. on this. Was there any more questions? Did you vote on this yet? Yeah, we were, we had the uh, discussion. We, we, we were in our discussion phase of the uh, voting to support. Sort of expand it over there, but we're. Okay. <laughs> on this, the motion on the table is to, not support, correct? No, the motion was to support. To support. Um, <laughs> any more discussion? To support the article. Okay. I think I've been in town for a long time and listening to the people at the town meeting, when you mentioned how much this is going to cost, a lot of them will probably get up and walk out the door because they have no idea what it's all about. And a lot of information needs to be brought up before we write a Bible. Mm -hmm. When somebody says, and I know the town of Shrewsbury is like, this is $125,000 for the town. Yeah, for Shrewsbury. I know it's a big town. Town of Charlton just, there was an article in the paper about the town of Charlton, and they were paying theirs $146,000 a year. Oh, yeah. They want, yeah, they, they they wanted to get rid of her, so they reduced her salary to a dollar. To a dollar to get rid of her. Mm. Okay. And I know the town of Paxton. After they $146,000. Now, we, the town of Paxton, they're a little larger than we are, and they have one up there, and I think they pay, and they couldn't find one, they pay 100000 and that's what the salary was, and they said they couldn't find anybody that take the job for What's less Hardwick than that. What's Hardwick paying, though, because Hardwick's got one. I think they've got a part-time town administrator, I think they're paying like 65000 for but that's a part. But you're hour saying that's a part-time. Part yeah, but we still. would want. We would probably hire a full time. Is that what you're talking, or a part time? Uh, well, it, the way it's phrased on this is it full time. I, it does full say time. Full time. Yeah. But, but I don't you know, think we, you're going to. We have a lot of people that are anything over 20 hours really is considered at least a regular employee, um, and and it's up to the town to fund it at whatever level that the town chooses to fund it, mm -hmm. right? So. Um, Having the study back around to people so that they can read the study and understand what they're asking for. Yep. I mean, if I have two things that we need to have better con connections with are human resources and interrelationships between the departments. And that's and those really are two they... things that are needed from my perspective. And, and I don't think they would have control over elected officials. No. No. No one has. No, that's no what Don had said that. You. They're still going to answer to you. You had mentioned that they would do the everyday things that go on and they would have power over the appointed but they wouldn't have over the elected officials right they don't have anything to do with them right and uh, if you wanted to do that then you'd have to go write a whole town charter and the whole work right and that's quite a project well, motion to support or or that motion to support is on the table as correct second correct um all in favor of supporting the article Say aye. 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 All in favor? Oh, not in favor. Aye. Okay. So, or I'm going to say five. I'm not in support. Two, two, five. <laughs> That's why we're going to go beyond 9:30. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's a worthy conversation. It is, it know? is, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. It's a one dollar yeah. plowing for uh, you know dirt roads. <clears throat> okay. All right. Our It'll next, be a good discussion. Okay, the next one we're moving on. Let's see what you that, Beth. On the town administrator, let's see here. We did not have it on our agenda because I believe it it has nothing to do because with it's capital. Not, I know. Yeah. It's it's yeah. a it's a operating expense and it's personnel. Yeah. So they mm -hmm. they uh, did not weigh in. But they weighed in on the one with the the bylaw, the article twenty three bylaw. Mm -hmm. Which one? Which one was twenty three? That's okay. Never mind. Okay. Because she said yes to that. Okay, we're going to go on to Article 25. Well, the, yeah, they did, they did on the bylaw oh. because of the uh, relationship to the free cash. Okay, well set. Yep. Move on to 25. And this is to, um, we had a similar thing. We had the same thing with the pilot agreement on this last year. It's for the solar. And this one is for um, 8 Mitchell Hill Road. Right, so motion to place so, yeah. and to support. support. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We were wondering, is this specific to 8 Mitchell or yes. what about yeah. others? No, this no, is just this is every time you have one that comes in, you have to have a pilot agreement because we have a pilot agreement down at, what is it, 52 or 54 South, South Maple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so each of them have a separate pilot agreement. Yep. And this is sponsored by the Assessor's Department. Okay. And that's gone through legal and the yeah. rest. Mm -hmm. Your motion to support. I'd like to know if this is the one that's. No, this isn't Xterra. This is the one with the hill. It's Xterra. She missed this the last time she was granted the town meeting. No, this is Texera. This is Texera. Yeah. I support. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? No. Yeah, this one was yours. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about yeah. it. Yeah, you, you can present that if yep. you want. Yeah, I will. Okay. So 26 is uh, basically where we have open space under chapter land. If the property were to be taken over by a solar farm or whatever, then any taxes that would be due or re refunds to, to the town that would be due, that the, those funds would go into a, an account. And again, the account would be established with zero money. But should there be a place like Mitchell Hill, um, that, that those monies go into a, an account to be used for open space purposes in the future rather than the general fund. I'll so, okay, so I'm, yeah. I'm mo motion, motion to place and support. I'll, I'll second, yeah, I'll All second that. Right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And again, this would be a perfect example where I explained the last time that we're looking to get an open space grant specific to the playground. This would be monies that could go to support the, the balance of what it costs. Park money grants are 70-30 splits, so you could, if you had 30% in your pocket, you could go do, do, a do, do a lot more. So that's why you'd want to have it there. What would be the method of, of proposing uses? Be town, it was town meeting. No. Okay. Yeah. Advisory, um, we're here in motion to support Article 26. I move that we place and support Article 26. Well, we still have to. Favor? Aye. Yes. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Okay. This, we did this last year. Now, Beth, um, did the C CIPC, did they? Um, they uh, did support this. They did support actually, this. Actually, member Peter said that they would sponsor it, actually. Yes. It originally was sponsored by the Treasurer's Office last year, but <coughs> since Peter said CIPC. Yeah, Peter said they would. Yes. Yeah. So, motion to place and support. Okay. I'll, I'll second. Say, yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, is, is this the correct number, 51737? This is what was on... Uh, yes. Uh, the more last year. That was well, exactly last year right. was seventy-one thousand something. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it was higher last year. This is the figure, <laughs> Linda, that you gave. The number from last year was fifty-one thousand. The treasurer's office. Yeah. So, hold this, on. So, uh, um, Lanny actually sent me an email. 
Oh, validating the number. It might be less. Hold on okay. a second. Because this is where we got this original figure was from the. Oh, it was. So it was the same. So it can't, maybe it's, maybe it can't be the same. No, I think, yeah, I think it was a different, she gave me a different number, I think. I think it might be like 30 or something. School refund. There we go. Um, Did she Check send this. you the number? Because I take, asked take, you. Take a look at this, please. This is an email, you know, March yeah. 27th, yep. right here. To be so refunded. To be refunded, yep. That was 71 for, um, this, is that for this year? This is dated right That's there. That's from Deb Boyd. So this is from Deb yep. Boyd. I'll okay. take 71. So, so it's what is seventy? So what's, what's the real? Figure? Yeah, what's the figure? Seventy-one thousand. Looks like seventy-one six is what. Then that's better to get it from dead from, yeah. from the other one. So yeah. Seventy-one what? Seventy-one thousand. Seventy-one thousand. Okay. Yeah. Seventy-one thousand. 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 Karen, this is in your uh, right. Right. Okay. Excellent. That's good. Take the money and write. If you want to copy it, so. Okay. Oh. That's good. So we're amending that to seven one six hundred, correct? Right. That's yes. the, and that would be in the notes anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but let's. Verify. You want it. Well, double no, what check. I just, what, I, what I what I what I would like to do is is um, let's send a note back to the treasurer, have her reach out to Tantasco, and have them come up with the same number twice. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> let's get the same number twice. Right. Um, advisory uh, motion to accept uh, or to uh, support Article Twenty Seven. The number to be determined. Right. Verified. The number to be verified by, by Tim Tasco. Right. Right. Time of direction. You have a motion. Second. Right. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Got it. Yep, in fact, uh, Karen, you forwarded it to us on that yeah. day. Yep. But see what happened is when we were putting this together, Linda had gone into the office next door and asked for the figure off the top of her head. And yeah. That's what we got and that's what we wrote. And this is what the, yeah, so they told fine. us. Yeah. Got it. Verify and move on. Okay. Article 28. This is um, to establish a police cruiser replacement account for allocating funds each year towards the placement of the police vehicles. And this is sponsored by the CIPC. Would you right. like to speak on this? Uh, I do. Um, even if we decided at this point to create the account and fund it at a dollar, mm -hmm. what the CIPC would like to see is the creation of that account as a stabilization fund. And then once we have our books reconciled, to fund it um, at a level this year for two cruisers because we've been off cycle mm -hmm. for some time. Uh, and then in annually there to just go ahead and fund at a one cruiser level but to have the money sitting there and not necessarily mm -hmm. spend it until it's determined by the police chief and the board of selectmen that we actually have to replace the cruisers so over time we may get to the point where we get one ahead okay. um, but it will help us level load the expense and not wind up with another year mm -hmm. where we have to pay for two yep. Yep. So motion to place and support second all in favor aye, aye. What sort of dollars are we talking about? So, it, the, this is voting the creation of the stabilization account. Yes. Um, it, the intent would be as part of the motion we could, we could create and fund, or we could just choose to create and, and 
and not fund at this meeting and fund at a future meeting once we have like our free cash coming back and, mm -hmm. and what have you. Okay. Um, but the creation of a separate stabilization fund will, will at least set the expectation that we fund it as part of our capital planning process. We're we'll here in motion to support Article 28, creating a stabilization fund for the police. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, moving on. 29. Okay, this is, this whole one is on the placement of the South Pond Bridge. And, right. and basically, I think all this is, is, um, it's not going to cost the no, town any no. money. No, money will, yeah. Yeah, there's no acquisitions no. because it's not, it's owned by um, DCR and Fish and Wildlife. So there's no, uh, there's not going to be any in, imminent domain or anything no. because there's no private property owner. So it, doesn't this have something to do with the, um, what do you call it? The SDOT told me there's no cost to the town on this. Is this something to do with an easement? Yes. yes. This is to it do with the easement. Replacement of the South Pond Bridge, right? Yes. So, so the town owns the parking lot right beside the bridge. Mm -hmm. yep. So basically, when they do the work on the bridge, the uh, DOT would utilize that uh, area yep. for stockpiling and equipment mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So they need a temporary easement. Yep. Uh, and then at the end of the project, they will restore that parking lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep, so okay. no, no cost. Okay. Motion in place and support. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, advisory, uh, do I hear motions uh, um, place and support on Article 29? All in favor? Second. Second. Yeah, good. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Uh, I, I just, I, I'll need to understand it a little more. This is, this, we didn't review this previously. Correct. We did not. You guys good? Yeah. Okay. 30 yep. 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 We'll do 30. Okay. So Article 30 is, relates to the South South Pond Beach and Boat Ramp area um, that we formed a committee last at last at the last meeting of individuals that will take responsibility for the South Pond Beach and boat ramp area. Uh, what this does is <clears throat> this. This 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 allows that the town, uh, by recommendation of the committee and the board of selectmen, would enter into agreements with both beach. Uh, with fisheries and wildlife related to the beach and that we would go into an agreement with the Office of Boat Access. Uh, what this further provides is a provision for fees to be collected. So let me explain that. In the current budget that you have, you have about $1,000 in the rec department's budget that would, is funding the porta potties for the fiscal year. What you also have, or what QQLA has are provisions to pick up the trash and dispose of the trash. In the Board of Health's uh, budget, you have $750 for water testing. Those monies would stay in the budget for this year. What we have is, uh, and what will be discussed at the committee's meeting tomorrow night, is to a recommendation to beach access and to grant the uh, boat access so that uh, we could decide what fees we would want to collect. In the case of uh, discussion, what, what is for discussion is that for beach use, the idea is, though this is not firm because the committee has not discussed it or voted on it or anything, but the idea of collecting $2 per family or individual to use the beach with a provision to buy a, a, a season pass for $25 and that those monies be put into a fund, this would create that fund this article would create this fund where we then wean off town dollars. Again, you've been paying about, well, if you add in QQLA, $2,700 a year to uh, maintain the beach for others to be using the beach. What the fees offer is the opportunity to collect from other towns and other, uh, other areas uh, to be able to offset what would be at least a 
2000 or $2,700 expense per year. What, what uh, this, this also does is, uh, where was I headed with that? I don't know where I was headed with that. So, um, oh, life yeah, they want life, thank you. They want lifeguards, they prefer lifeguards. This is fisheries and wildlife. If we were to do just some rudimentary lifeguard coverage, a couple of uh, lifeguards at, at eight hours a day kind of thing, four hour, two, two four hour shifts basically, you end up with seven or $8,000 that you've got to come up with. So rather than the town of Brookfield being ob obligated to come up with seven or eight thousand dollars, what we could do and what sh we should be thinking about doing is signing the agreement for a year, see what the fees that we collect are to offset the town's expenses, and uh, what I would hope that we would do is have enough funds that would we uh, eventually not, years out, not this year, that would be we would be able to fund lifeguards and or attendant support or, or the like. As far as the fees, we can charge fees for the launching, the average, uh, I shouldn't say the average, the range of value for boat launches similar to what we have is between five and eight dollars per use. Well, again, we would, what has been discussed is the idea of a five dollar fee per single use or twenty five dollars again for a year's use uh, would be the boat, boat ramp. And again, if you think about um, the kinds of derbies that we have and whatnot, we basically pay off the porta potty with those funds from the calculations we've had. Um, as far as the, the beach fee, um, it's really going to be a year worth of finding out what we'll really have as far as the population of people, uh, so we can determine what we can and can't do. But again, what I'm what I'm what I'm proposing or have proposed, and I look forward to the committee making a, a formal decision and back to the board of selectmen is that we do this for a year. That's what we've, the term for the contract is one year. So we see we, where we are a year from now. But again, it goes, the idea of the town, and again, I, in the town, I refer to QQLA and their, their expense that they've put up, uh, to wean off the $2,700 that's come from the town of Brookfield to make it a, a more regional effort of people paying off the expenses for the beach. Sign with the fishery, do they require lifeguards for us to? It, no, we, and we've, it, it, we would maintain the same language that says they essentially it says that in essence they prefer it, but okay. they, they, they can't. They, yeah. okay. If we're accepting the fees, are we obliged to have these things this year? Oh, you can close the beach. I mean, you can absolutely. But if we're taking fees, if we're yeah, what, a person or whatever else, yeah. is, is a person paying $2 under the expectation that there will be a lifeguard there? Oh, no, 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 the, 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 the yeah, no, we, we have not supplied a lifeguard. If we were to supply a lifeguard, your budget would have to increase by $8,000, basically. Sure, and, but we're not going to do it. Correct. Yeah, but what we're saying is there's a sign as you walk at the d door that says, you know, no lifeguards, you're swimming right. at your own risk. Give me two bucks, you still have no lifeguard. No, if you give two bucks, you still don't have a lifeguard. But you do have empty trash cans and a porta part. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. You're paying $2 for empty trash cans and a porta part. Got it. Right. Yep. So, so, I mean, the, the plan would be if you collect enough money, then next year maybe you get lifeguards or something. Know, we, something, something like that. My, my expectation, at least next year, the town of Brookfield doesn't pay 2700 bucks. And again, I say QQLA's kicking in a yeah. thousand bucks of that 2700. The town of Brookfield is not going to pay the whole bill. What we have is the opportunity to collect from others. Right, 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 right. And, and again, I, mm -hmm. I think that that's fair to the town that the town pay a portion, but the town not pay everything. And again, the contract is written such that any funds that are collected must go to the maintenance of the beach and uh, boat ramp. We can't put it in the general fund. Right. I have a question. Yep. If we are, if the plan entails collection of fees, who will collect the fees? The committee. So the committee will be responsible for putting someone there in the summer and no. saying $2, please. No, what, what it's going to be, Tom, is that uh, boat access has access to these um, volunteer boxes, basically with envelopes. Mm -hmm. So you're going to collect from a box. 
and and the other back to managing it that the box will have envelopes you tear off the tab and you put it on your dashboard that you paid the two bucks and, and again the committee is will be responsible for some level of scrutiny okay. and it sounds like this is being implemented as a trial or pilot program mm -hmm. and we see how it works this year and then it's a one-year yeah. agreement and we decide how we want to proceed mm -hmm. based on the data we collect this year exactly okay that's i understand that the appeal of that Let's see where it goes <laughs> otherwise the beach gets closed how does that work with the uh the state owns that beach that's correct and we can take we can still collect money yep. on top of that yep in fact they're they're recommending it because they want the lifeguards so someone who pays a, a fishing license every year ah. and goes down there and, and and fishes can't charge them okay. sure so sure fit sure fishermen cannot be charged okay that was a state okay so you're, you're going to try to blame the public if I want to go down and have a swim. I'm going to have to pay two bucks just to go have a swim. You're going to blame me for a lousy two, three dollars? No. See what happens. I think, pretty, I think that's pretty sad in the little town of Brookfield. Yep, good. Thank you. Pretty sad. Yep. Okay. So we've got the votes from both So I've got, I've got a motion to place and support. I'll, I'll, I'll I think suck I it up. It. Yeah, oh, we already yeah. did. Yep. So. You're all set. Oh, we're, we're all, all set. set. We're all set. Now it's advisory. advisory. Um, do I hear a motion from advisory to place and support this Article 30? You yeah, have so moved. Second. Very well. All in favor? Aye. All in favor. You're staying. You're staying. Okay. Um, who's in favor? Okay, so we got five, five. Um, now I'm, I'm, um, I'm abstaining as well. So there's five. Okay. Okay. Moving right. on. Uh, Moving then on. Article 31. Thank you for putting the placeholder, Karen. Um, yeah. The the motion would read to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow uh, a sum of money to continue the lease of 18 Common Street, Brookfield, Massachusetts. Motion to support, place and support. Not these were not money articles. Well, so there are some money yeah, articles. Some, some money articles. And we were told to limit it to as 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 the minimal amount that we yeah. could for for continuance of um, like normal business operations. Yeah. So the the lease is in place. We have the option to continue it for a year. The original intent of the board of the library trustees was to go for the purchase of the property, um, because of the fact that we are in the situation that we are and we don't have reconciled books. Uh, the library trustees has backed off of that position and they're they're putting it on as uh, strictly a continuation of the lease. Um, and uh, we we have had discussions with the Hellers and and uh, I need to reach out to town council. Uh, because they have offered to, um, if we come back around in the fall and want to do a purchase, then anything remaining of the lease funds uh, will get applied directly to the purchase price. So it's not it's not necessarily money sunk if the town decides to make the decision to purchase the property later on. So. Um, the town, why, the town trustee is going to kick some money in. Uh, so the, the trustees don't have a separate budget other than the library operating budget that they receive from the town. The, the um, friends of the library are not kicking in because... That's my question. Yeah, so, so the, the friends are, are, are asking that the town assume the, the burden of the lease, um, specifically because they had um, been positioned yeah. to go ahead and go do the purchase. But they yep. had funds. They had funds for the previous right. for, year. For, for, from, for, and that for, came from the friends. Right. So um, they're asking that we fund it as a town at the $16,500, which would be the full year lease at the reduced rate for paying the year in advance. But then any, if we do choose to purchase during this second period of the lease, any months of rent that has not been consumed will be applied directly to the purchase price. What was the total amount for the house? $16,500. Oh, total amount? Um, that is also going to be the, the uh, amendment that we need to get town council to write up 
uh, the original agreement between the town and and the uh, property owners was that it would be uh, uh, 239,000 if we purchased it uh, prior to starting the second year of the lease and it would be 249 if it was any time during the second year of the lease um, there they are also going to prorate that by month if we choose to execute prior to the end of the second year is the lease moving on towards the purchase? Yes. Yes. And so the decision has been made to do this, correct? Purchase this house for the library. So the town meeting still has to make yeah. the decision to purchase, okay? Which is the reason why they are asking to do the lease um, where um, just they didn't feel comfortable where all the other large money articles were coming off from the standpoint of things like the fire truck and we're not going to necessarily fund the cruisers. Um, Last year there was a lot of due diligence that had not been done. Is that underway? Do we have that information? Roof and... Yeah. So the roof has already been yeah. replaced. The roof, I mean, the roof I, has know, been replaced. Being, yeah, There's an inspection sure that has been done, but, but predominantly this, we're not necessarily buying the property for the premises. We're buying the property for... Or, or making the proposal to buy the property for the future options relative to the building, whether it's an expansion, whether it's um, the ability to, to place the septic. There's a, a significant uh, uh, layout related to uh, homing all of the historical documents that we have in town, including stuff that's currently inaccessible and, and tucked in corners of the town hall. Uh, the historical committee is also involved in this and has plans to um, place a number of collections um, within the confines of the property as it's, as it's laid out and make those available to the public. Um, there's also, um, once the historical committee has a location, there are a number of private collections in town or that uh, may be coming to them uh, in order to retain some of that, that, those historical materials that currently there's, there's no location for. So at this point, it's, is somewhat morphed into a, a joint activity between uh, the library trustees and the historical committee. Hmm. Do we know what percentage the, uh, the friends of the museum or the library will, will put up this purchase price? I remember that from last year. Um, the, at the time, there's 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 no um, commitment from the friends relative to the purchase price. Well, but I thought you said there was. <coughs> last year last, there was. They had the donations. Community? Last year, the friends paid half of the annual yeah. lease. Yes. Correct. So eight thousand or whatever. Eight eighty two fifty or something like that. Correct. Is that what it was? Okay. But there will be some out there by the third third. We don't know. So the friends are committing to improvements upon acquisition of the property, not funding towards the acquisition of the property. Do we know how much they have um, committed? Um, I, if, we're, I, if we're going to buy it, how much are they going to put into it and what's it going to look like is what I would like to better understand. So the, we had a specific vote around that from the Capital Improvement Committee perspective of how much we were going to limit any investment in the property post-acquisition, but... Um, I don't remember what it was at this point. Yeah. Bring the notes <laughs> I don't have that meeting's notes with me. Will someone address it on the... Floor of either one of the meetings? They'll have to. October yes. Or the October? Yes. Okay. So they'll have, the, uh, and because they're not going for the acquisition of the property, I don't have all of the acquisition details, to be frank with you. I didn't, I didn't re review the details with them about the acquisition because they were moving off the acquisition right. stance right. based on the fact that, that the town needs to reconcile the books. Well, I mean, I guess I just, I, excuse me, I just was. was I mean, I remember what happened last year. It was very disorganized and confused. I mean, they were almost this for such a large purchase for someone who was representing the library to make the presentation, maybe the town meeting, saying sort of pre voting that this is what we're going to do, show pictures, put yep. a PowerPoint. Understood. Um, I mean, it's a big, it's a big number. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, and which is one of the reasons why, given that we don't have free cash and we don't have our books reconciled, that they're not pursuing the purchase for the annual town meeting, but to your right, point. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, is it like pre-purchase pre 
pre-planning. A, a lot the, of there's been a lot of pre-work that has gone on to the to the planning of of, right, but, of that yeah. at this point. Yes. Do we know how old the house is? Do I know off the top of my head now? Do they have that information? Yes, yeah, they have the full history. The they house. do. They have a complete is that house be inspection. Price or we have to that from the uh, so, I know the septic system in the library is accessible. Correct. Okay. Right. So the, one of the reasons hmm? for this acquisition is to is to provide a, appropriate room for septic system and potential future library uh, expansion. Okay. Um, if we had purchased the property to the north of the building uh, several years ago when it came up, we would have gotten it for basically less than half the money. So I understand everybody wincing at the price tag. But when you wait 15 or 20 years to acquire the neighboring property, unfortunately, real estate continues to go up. Okay, So at the end of the day, if we are ever going to go outside the confines of the library walls right now, um, even if we choose not to pursue the type of mausoleum that the Massachusetts Library Association requires, okay, um, we, we are, it requires some amount of space in order to, um, in order to do that. Okay? Um, this would provide us options to where we can have a Brookfield solution at our own pace and cadence, um, similar to when we acquired the Prouty property and eventually built the police station, but that was years in, in the making. This would at least put us in a position to have the option to do whatever expansion in place that, that we needed or wanted to do, even just from a standpoint of, of appropriate septic replacement. So. I know West Brookfield when they added on to the library. It was like a lot of state money, but like it was over three million dollars just to add that piece in the back. Correct. Right. So and, cause, and if you it, and if you take the state money for the expansion, you have to meet all of their requirements for a library building, which is what made it a. I don't think it was a three million dollar. I think it was closer to an eight million dollar project, well, and the town paid it, half. So it was like a four million dollar project. I remember talking to uh, Mrs. J. Volunteers over there, and she was saying about how. Right. People are wondering how it happened. Well, the state kicked in a lot of dough. So. Right, but yeah, at, at the at the end of the that. day, to do any of those options, whether we went with state money or whether we just went ahead and and enhanced what's there, okay, then then that either way, um, in order to preserve our options and let the town make a rational decision when we have our free cash and our books settled and what have you. Um, that's why we're, we were going to be support. That's why the CIPC was supporting allowing a continuation of lease. Okay, and then we can make the decision about the purchase of the property um, in the fall, in the fall yep. along with but our other major financial. I don't think it'll be. What are we getting for fourteen hundred dollars a month right now? I like to know what we're getting as a town, as a library. Okay, it's eight thirty, and quite house? frankly, I'd prefer to move on. Yeah, okay. I'd like I to. We can talk uh, about that at the time. I'd like to move on too. Okay. I want to answer that. That question, not too confidential. Oh no, I'm actually uh, too confidential. No, it's not too confidential. Okay, Cur what, 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 currently, what they have is the historic collections over there, and and they're making a number of the the maps and things that have been stored up in kind of like the eaves space of the library available to to anybody that's looking to do that research. There's also been some significant traffic through that building for a number of different committee meetings. They've been using it as as meeting space and and uh, they've held some activities yeah. over there as well. Yep, yeah. sir. Yeah. Suzanne. Yep. So. I have a question. And it should be quick. Um, if the free cash, if we knew our free cash position and we had a handle on the town finances, yes, would we be voting on whether to buy the property or not? Do you feel that yes. we have the information? Yes. Uh, I'd like to ask a follow-up question. Has anyone not invested in wanting the library to make this acquisition? Looked at this with the um, with the idea of the representing the town's interest, not just the library's interest. As a disinterested party, looked at this. Someone, it's like because my thought is the library has been pushing this, and they they want it. So to me, they're not disinterested. They want to put this in as positive light as possible. So have we? This is we're looking at allocating sixteen thousand dollars. Whether we buy it or not. That's $16,000 that are going 
that, we're, that are coming off our budget, if we go forward with the project, some of it's going to go to the purchase price, mm -hmm. but basically it's a $16,000 expense. We're not getting any of that money back if we decide to walk away two months in. That's correct. So now my, so my question is, if we feel that we're in the position to buy to, that we could buy if we had the finances available, where's the justification? Where's someone said, yes, the purchase price makes sense, I've, we've done the analysis, it's a based on the condition of the building, and that's a fair price, and we've looked at it, it's in good condition, and it is suitable for the, the planned use over the next couple of years. I like the people at the library, but they want this to happen, and I would feel so, so, so here's so, here, so, so here's the problem with, with the approach that you're talking about, Tom, mm -hmm. is that, again, it's not the building in its current state that we're purchasing. Okay, it's it really has to do with the options, future state, whether it's to handle the septic, whether it's whether it's expansion of the library. From a standpoint of, of sheer, they have a copy of the inspection prior to the original um, um, lease. entry into the lease. They went ahead and did replacement of the the, the roofing in order to maintain the integrity of the building. Uh, the overall inspection, um, it's, it's a publicly available document. I can ask the library to put together a package. Mm -hmm. if, if you try to do a dollar for dollar analysis though, I'll, I'll tell you today that it's, it's a little bit high per square foot if we were doing like a, a private uh, house acquisition for that particular property with that particular ins inspection, you could probably negotiate it down some percentage, not a huge amount, quite frankly, with the current market. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, but that's not what you're buying. You're not actually buying that building. What you're buying is the is the option for the town to make a future decision about what we want from the standpoint of of, of options for for expansion and service to the town from the standpoint of library and the historical committee. Okay. If you if you want to try to justify it today against that building specifically with the penny for penny what it's going to give us in the next year or two is probably not the best financial case in the world, okay? What the, what the financial case is for is what we already sacrificed once because we, we sat on our hands when a, an adjacent property to that library came up for sale and because of the same type of debate prior even to the town meeting that they were gonna decide whether to purchase it or not, a private buyer went ahead and, and, and purchased the property. And in doing that, we lost our opportunity to do things like handle the septic and expand the building according to the plans that, that we spent thousands of dollars of town money already developing from the standpoint of library expansion opportunities. So you know what? Absolutely, we can put a package together. It'll have the inspection. You can make your own decision. The historical committee has some great information of exactly what layout they're going to be doing, how they're going to be able to process materials for the town, and what that future benefit is. But is our history quantifiable? Can you put a can you put a value on on some of the collections that we'll be able to bring in because people, citizens within the town, know that there's actually a place where it would reside with the historical committee. I don't know that I can put a price tag on that for you today, and I don't know that we can even get a quantifiable analysis for you. But what I can tell you is that it really should be up to the townspeople to be able to decide that with both the quantifiable and the non-quantifiable in front of them. But what I, one thing I want to do is get away from framing up this question as to is that house worth it penny for penny, square foot for square foot? Because it doesn't all have to do with the house or the square footage. It has to do with the options for the town and for the, the citizens to be able to make a longer term decision about what they want from a standpoint of library services. And quite frankly, they have a, a fairly uh, solid representation behind them because of the level of usage that that little library sees. Their circulation, their, their wheel count going through that library is much higher than some of those giant mausoleum libraries that people have spent millions of dollars to put in. They're asking to spend $249,000 to have options and they're already spending less on building uh, overall expenses by a large amount than many of the communities that have half their circulation. Okay, so I, I think that's part of the whole case, mm -hmm. but I'm not gonna try to defend whether or not the, the fact that there's some sag in the sill somewhere along in the, in the inspection, whether or not it's a, a good decision. The decision has to do with the property and the, 
in terms of options and not in terms of the, the, the structure as it stands today. Excuse me. Has, has the um, Board of Selectmen supported this? Voted to support yeah, we're going to get to the fall, so we're going to support it. Yeah. We want to get to the fall. We're, we're going to get to the fall. Very well. Uh, do I hear a motion to support Article 31? Mm -hmm. We don't need any for to go on in the fall because we don't. Second. Hmm? All in favor? <coughs> not. Not everything is going to be finished in the fall. Yeah, well, then we just we have to keep going. Six one. Yep. Thank you. So, so that completes that. And I had a question. So that completes all the articles. I have a question, Steve. I had talked to you the other day, and Beth, we talked last week about it as doing our operating budget um, as usual. You know, giving um, raises to the employees. And uh, letting, instead of level funding it, letting them all have what they, you know, proposals that they needed for their different departments if it was higher. Correct. If you had that done for me, because Eric Kershaw there, we, the accountant, Eric would like to see that. We, we're, we're very close. I mean, we've got it almost all there. Um, we've got a couple that have not provided us with. Uh, but do you have like a rough one that he could look at it? Yeah, it could be yeah, sure. Do you have one? Yeah. Yeah. Steve, who yeah, has? We, we have, we have, I'll, I'll get it to you, but I, I can email it to you. Yeah, can um, e email it, you have my home address because my town one isn't working. Yeah. You got the one at home. Yeah. Yeah. Is the Board of Selectmen going to make a, a kind of, some kind of a statement? At the beginning yeah, of we, yeah, the I'm sure we will. Explaining the situation. Yes, we did. We've done that before, okay. and I'm yeah, sure I we'll just, do it. I, yeah. I yeah, we okay. will. Thank you. So, so you have a copy that I can. This is. I'm going to suggest that Tom plug in a couple more numbers and then get it to you. Okay. okay. If you can get it to me as soon as possible, the, I'd appreciate what I, it. What I'm, what we're going to plug in. Our numbers that we don't have, we're just going to carry them over. Okay. We don't send anybody to left to right. budget. And so yeah. now this is well, one that isn't the level. And, uh, by the way, we're going to need like numbers we do not have include like, you know, uh, uh, retirement fund, the unemployment insurance, various things like that. So the treasurer hasn't provided that. We have. We do not. All we have yeah. is one. They line. haven't called her in yet. She yeah. does. She is coming in to see them. We, we have asked. Okay. Um, we have one line, group health and life insurance. That's Why don't we put that down? Have. And also just a point too is the general insurance, which was in the Board of Selectmen's budget, went back to the Treasurer's office. They're aware of that because I spoke to Lonnie and her consultant. It's going to be level funded at 145. If you want to use that number for that, I can give you that right now, 145,000. And that's as per our insurance agent. I did give them that information. The general really insurance was on. General insurance was on. Budget, you're saying the well, it, it had been on my budget, and then Kerry switched it over to uh, to the treasurer because she said that's where it belongs. She said it never should have been in the board of selectmen's budget, which does make sense. But at any rate, it's 145 level funded. If you need that figure, that's not a level fund number, but um, um, that was well. That's what we had. Didn't, isn't it for general insurance? I believe that's what we had for last year. I don't have it in front of me. What other ones did he say we needed? Well, I he doesn't have from Hawaii. Ask him. I'm going to have to ask him, and yeah. we can get them for him so that they can plug them in. We can ask him tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, because we we should be at <clears throat> June 4th. We got it. Is that right? That's a correct okay. number. Yes. Okay. Now, Please, have... it was a correct number. Yeah. Golly. Well, I have no. You here. Yeah. Okay. No, no, it's it's not, can I just no. ask? Is the okay. board of selectmen all set? because we did get the breakdown of the legal yeah. funds that you requested from uh, Michelle. I did email them over to you. I, I, I received it, and yeah. I know I distributed it to everyone. So are we all set, or do we have to come back in and see you again? Because I think that was your only question, question was the breakdown. Yeah, no, we, we, we approved it, but. Okay, good, all right. Okay. We approved it, I don't know, two Now, ago, what are the numbers now do you need from, um, you said from the um, accountant, not the accountant, the Treasurer. secretary, Treasurer. Treasurer. Um, the group insurance. Retirement. Okay. Unemployment insurance. Medicare. The okay, town share. Okay, Medicare. Um, 
general insurance, which we just received at one hundred and forty-five thousand. Okay. Steve, also the debt and interest payments. Debt and interest payments. Okay, debt. Speak up. Anything else? I. Thank you. I have we received. Hold on, let me check my status. I don't think we received the. Uh, we received. I'm showing the treasurer's budget. We received a request, but I. She said, I talked to her, I talked to her about it today, and she said she had emailed you. Yes, that's, yes, that's yes. consistent. We, we have received it. I couldn't find any recollection of us voting on it. We um, did not. We reviewed it last week, and we, we... So you have the numbers. You have, we have numbers. Oh, so you don't, we you don't need numbers. me okay. to go get we, these we numbers from her tomorrow, the then. Budget. We do not have numbers for the insurance and debt and interest. Okay, we will then, we'll tell her tomorrow and we will get those to you. So we can plug those numbers. Okay. Yeah, okay. We did receive we did not approve. Okay. And so then, clear. I was told earlier that we did not have numbers. Yeah. In both cases now I've learned that we've had numbers. They may not have been voted or they may not be understood, but that we, in fact the treasurer did in fact try to do her job. She That's attempted true. to do her job. Yep. The insinuation was that she had not done her job. And she is doing her job. Attempting to. We have received it, yeah. I, I, I'm fine. I just, I clear it's 8.30. Um, you know, there, there's Quarter a few nine. others, you know, um, I don't know, you know, police station expenses. I don't know why we don't have that. I know that we approve. I'm, I'm looking at it. Yes. Okay. But... We'll, we'll fill this out and get it to you. Okay, so, as soon as you can, I'd appreciate it. And now we want to set a time to meet with them again to do the recommendations for money. June 4th. June 4th. All in or you don't get anything. Yeah, we need everything. You're we want, asking us something? Yeah, we want, what we want to do is we want to set another, another joint meeting for June 4th so wow. that we know just what we need for monies. For the different articles. Well, and you also have the recommendation yeah, from the finance recommend, from yeah. the accounting office. Yeah, he'll give it. He'll have it back for us also. Yeah. Probably, I should even send him the articles. Yeah, the police station. Everything else is paid for. The only debt we have is the police station. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's all we have right. is the police station. Okay. Well, no, we also have Sawmill Dam. Yes, yeah, Sawmill there's Pond. A small, there's a small debt. The, the only debt exclusion that we have is the police station. There's also the Sawmill Dam Pond. So we're being asked to join the Board of Selectmen on June 4th, which is a s Sunday night, right? No, it's a Tuesday. That's a joke. It's a Tuesday. Is that a regular uh, scheduled uh, meeting, June 4th? We're, we're even, two Steve. Two weeks from tonight. Two weeks from tonight. Yeah, two, two weeks from tonight. So we've got, I need that budget before then, beforehand. Right. June 4th. I will post it and uh, we will be here. Uh, Do we want to put that the first thing on the agenda? Absolutely. We want to put that for 6.30. Absolutely. Okay. We'll be here. Tell us on. And um, and you need you need the budget. You, you're going to get a a budget with the numbers filled in, maybe not finalized. Yeah, but because he you're yeah, pretty close. He wants to see it, so let us possible. know if, right. what he recommends. Right. Uh, the two and a half percent that you had recommended were essentially a cola on all wage lines. Correct. correct? Okay. Does that answer your question, Tom, on the two and a half percent? Two and a half percent is a COLA on all wage lines. Yes, that was, I, I, that's what I understood the request to be. It's just a matter was that, of. Was that an agreement with you? Tease it out of the spreadsheet that we have. Got it. It's yeah. a, so it's, it should be 24, 25,000, something like that. That's usually what it runs about. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm telling you. Roughly. Yeah, he's telling you. <laughs> yeah. I did, the last, I did the last year. Thank you. Anything else? Does that include the? Uh, it does not include the Collins Center, so no, okay. won't because include that. So, no. So the the original plan was to go with Collins Center or two and a half, whichever was larger. But because of the 
noise that we have on the financials, we're just going with the two and a half, and we're going to have to address the Collins Center activity. Probably in the fall. That is probably going to be on in the fall. Also. It's going to be on the fall meeting as well. Fall. Yeah. So. Meeting with Enstock up at uh, the Exteris Farm on Mission Road. The fellow from Enstock was there and he said that there's uh, a couple more people that are interested in solar plants. But with what they have now, uh, the top of Mitchell Road, that's one, and then Roman Road, which is the natural warren. Mm -hmm. And they have a problem that we're going to be able to put a transfer station on 148 either before the investor or after. For two million dollars. Now they have enough people requesting it to put the bank on a win. They're going to put this transfer station on for two million dollars. So I, I, I got a phone call from Connecticut and wanted to know where to, if I could send them a map or well, no. If you want, what are you looking for? One, one was marijuana and the other one was uh, uh, self solar promises. No, let's put one up here. So we don't have any room. We're all booked out already. Okay, do we want to move on to anything else under other from either one of you? Okay, why don't oh, we? Yeah. Okay, so let me just ch okay. double check. Okay, so yes, I do. I do want to talk. Um, so uh, I, I went to a meeting with uh, Mass Wildlife Ecolo mm -hmm. Ecological Restoration folks again. Um, they're looking to do a putting on Long Hill Road 11 acres back into grass. And then they're going to be over a number of years putting 180 acres into a forestry program. So there's going to be quite a quite a lot of activity up on Long Hill Road that I just wanted to pass on. Okay. That's that's good for me. Okay. Now we're going to go under correspondence. Okay. Uh, the Department of Telecommunications and the Cable Department will hold a public hearing um, to investigate the. Proposed basic service tier program equipment and installation rates in rate regulated communities in Massachusetts served by Charter Communications. The hearing will be held at 11 a.m. on Wednesday, July 24, 2019, in hearing room 1E at 100 Washington Street, Boston, Mass. And then our next one here is from, from Mass Audubon. Later this year, Mass Audubon will begin a forestry project at Elm Hill. Our 1,100-acre wildlife sanctuary roughly bordered by Donovan Road and Route 9 on the north and south and Town Farm Road and Brookfield Road on the east and the west. We would like to invite you to a public presentation and walk of the property to learn more about this project. The presentation will be at the Hastings Free Public Library, 161 North Main Street, North Brookfield, at 6 p.m. The walk off of Route 148 Brookfield Road at Buxton Hill Road will be followed by this presentation at 7.15 and should last no more than an hour. And that's it under correspondence. And we don't have anything else, so I yes. would like to make a motion to adjourn. And you have a second. Uh, in favor? Aye. Aye. They, they have not wanted to make.